It Ends With Us, the new film based on the TikTok viral book of the same name by Colleen Hoover, has rocketed to the top of the box office since its release. But most of the movie's press hasn't actually been about the movie itself. Instead, alleged behind-the-scenes drama has dominated the headlines and overshadowed the real message of the film. So what's really going on here? Let's take a moment to separate the production's problems from the movie's problems and analyze how they've intersected and sparked their own issues. Plus, we'll actually dive into the real important message that's getting lost in all of the drama. God, I love you. I know I love you too. What's the problem? It Ends With Us became a huge viral hit on Book Talk, so no one was surprised when it was eventually optioned to be turned into a film. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover has sold 8 million copies and is currently number one on the New York Times paperback bestsellers list. As with every adaptation, there were initial worries from fans that the movie would make huge changes to the characters or just not live up to the story they had imagined in their minds while reading. You know, a lot of times adaptations get a lot of flack for not sticking to the book, and I really feel like this one has been very faithful. On the flip side, people who did not think the book handled its themes well were worried that the film would come across as totally glamorizing an abusive relationship in the vein of some other big hits. But the actual drama that's ended up happening around the film isn't really quite what anyone had anticipated. Whispers of a rift between star and producer Blake Lively and director and producer Justin Baldoni began as soon as the promotional tour started, as people began to realize that the pair were never together during interviews or other promo. All of the cast seemed to be separated from Baldoni, and he was left to do interviews by himself. He even hired a crisis PR firm that has worked with some pretty shady characters in the past, which isn't a great look. And Blake has been hit with an avalanche of criticism for her behavior as well. But it seems that all of the issues began much earlier, during the film's production. Apparently much of the rift stems from disagreements on how the story should play out, leading to two separate cuts of the film being made, with Lively's winning out in the end. But it seems she also had her husband Ryan Reynolds come in and rewrite parts of the script, too, unbeknownst to the actual screenwriter. We work together so much that the iconic rooftop scene in this movie, my husband actually wrote it. Nobody knows that but you now. Initially, there were reports that the fight was over Blake's desired change to the ending, which we'll explain in a moment. But actually, Baldoni agreed that the change was good Good. so it seems that the real rift came from elsewhere. The focus of the press tour has been odd as well, to say the least. While Baldoni has been more direct about the content and message of the film, that is, it being a harrowing story of a woman getting pulled into and trying to escape from an abusive relationship. The question that's always asked is, why did she stay? Mm. And that's the wrong question. Yeah. What we need to be asking ourselves is, why do men harm? Blake, on the other hand, has seemed to be avoiding the topic nearly completely, to the point that many feel she's been dismissive of the larger message of the film, instead preferring to focus on getting to use best friend Taylor Swift's music in the film and her red carpet fashion. Your floral fashion continues flourishing this yes, whole press tour. How much fun are you having with these best? It's so pretty. Look at it. You guys are not getting it in the shot. <laughs> As more and more people began to point out just how incongruent the press tour has been with the darker content of the film. He's making a list and checking it twice. Grab your red coats and come see my new movie, Schindler's List, starring a hunk with a very particular set of skills, Liam Neeson. Lively did eventually post some information about domestic violence to her Instagram stories. Some have pointed out that much of the promo on Lively and Reynolds' part seemed to be some kind of attempt to recreate the Barbenheimer phenomenon from last summer, as the release coincides with a new Deadpool movie, but no one's really taking the bait. While all of the drama surrounding and overshadowing the real story of the film has bothered book fans, it's also led to other audience members having no idea what to expect when going into the film. Because so much of the promo has framed it as more of a straight-up romance, some are going into the film unaware of the much darker themes they'll be encountering. So let's take a deeper look at the actual story and how the rollout of the film has done it a disservice. The film, like the book, follows Lily Bloom, who owns a flower shop, as she becomes trapped in an abusive relationship with neurosurgeon Ryle. There were some changes to the characterizations for the film. For example, both were aged up, especially Lily, who was only 23 in the book. And while book Lily was more financially beholden to Ryle, movie Lily seems much more well-off, judging by her incredibly expensive wardrobe. This all does change the dynamic between the two, shifting it away from the more obvious power dynamics of the age 
and finance gaps. But it doesn't actually make the relationship any less realistic. Independent, strong, and capable people are just as able to get pulled into abusive relationships as anyone else. There is often a thought that one can be too smart or too tough to allow oneself to get into that kind of situation. But that's faulty thinking, because that's just not how real life works. Predators are able to find holes in even the strongest of armor and use that to their advantage. And that's the thing with abusers. They have tactics to get to your heartstrings and make you stay. And the seed for this story apparently came from Hoover watching this play out in her own life, watching her mother grapple with and eventually escape the abuse of her father. My first memory of being alive, and I remember my sister and I hiding in our bedroom, and I peeked out right as my dad threw a TV at my mom. She wondered how and why someone as strong as her mother could get stuck in such a relationship, and attempted to use fiction as a way to better understand the situation. This has been a big point of contention with the book and now the film. Is it glamorizing the abuser, or just attempting to really unpack how these kinds of people are able to, for a time, present themselves as glamorous and alluring to pull in their victims? And it's so hard when it's sprinkled in at first and then it builds and it builds and then you start to believe that it's you and you go through all of these emotions and all this mental struggle. It's not as black and white as going, you commit DV, screw you, I'm leaving. Many believed that even if it was attempting to show how abusers hide their true colors and play as charming, the book went too far in romanticizing Ryle, especially with the ending being that Lily allows him to stay in their child's life so that they can co-parent. Thankfully, that ending was changed for the film. The film does seem to showcase the parts of Ryle that drew Lily in while unpacking the reality of how such a relationship can make you question if things are really that bad, even when they clearly are, without romanticizing it or him too much. I personally believe that they romanticized the, the abuse in the beginning of the movie for a reason, to confuse you, to make you constantly have to remind yourself that he was an abuser. He is an abuser. Yes, he is wooing her. Yes, he is really good looking. Yes, he's doing all of these amazing things and he is an abuser. But that just makes the trailers framing it as a regular romance story, the promo tour, and the general refusal to engage with the grittier sides of the story all the more odd. To some degree, one could argue that the promo might just be a poorly done attempt to mirror the abuse scenario that plays out in the film, drawing in viewers with romance and steamy times, only to confront them with something much darker. But if so, that is a pretty messed up way to promote a film, for the obvious reasons, and because people should absolutely be able to have prior knowledge of that kind of content taking place within a film before they go in, so that they can prepare themselves for it. There needed to be disclaimers before the movie and before the book. I felt like I was hit by a train. I was so caught off guard because I went into it thinking that I was gonna read a girly pop love story. And they shouldn't have to hunt down a spoiler synopsis to find out about it. It's unfortunate that, given that those involved with the film did seem to see where the book went off course and worked to fix it to some degree, that everything has so completely fallen apart in the promotion of the film. It Ends With Us was a great opportunity to elevate awareness about domestic violence and really open up a larger conversation around the reality of how one can become ensnared in such a situation and why it can be so difficult to leave. Domestic abuse affects so many women across the country every day. According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, intimate partner violence alone affects more than 12 million people every year, and one in four women have been the victim of severe physical violence by an intimate partner in their lifetime. And because it isn't talked about enough, women often feel ashamed or like they have no way out. So the promo around this film would have been a great time for everyone involved, especially the biggest star on the project, to really open up the conversation and uplift affected voices. There is nothing weak or embarrassing about finding oneself in an abusive relationship, and it takes a lot of strength to realize it and a lot of resilience to pull oneself out. Domestic abuse isn't just a plotline in a summer blockbuster. It's a real issue, and you aren't alone. That's the take. Click here to watch the video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And make sure to subscribe to our Patreon for exclusive new videos.